Tavi, a reader's theater script adapted by Patricia Hutchinson from the story by Rudyard Kipling. Cast of characters. Narrator, Teddy, a young boy. Mother, Teddy's mother. Father, Teddy's father. Ricky Ticky Tavi, a mongoose. Darzi, a bird, Darzi's wife. Chachandra, a muskrat. Nag, a cobra. Nagina, Nag's wife. Karate, a snakeling. Coppersmith, a bird. Act 1. This is the story of the great war that Ricky Ticky Tavi fought all by himself. He got help from Darzi, the tailor bird, and advice from Chachandra, the muskrat. But Ricky Ticky did the real fighting. Ricky Ticky was a mongoose. His tail looked like a cat, but his head looked more like a weasel. He could fluff up his tail until it looked like a bottle brush. His war cry as he snaked through the long grass was, Ricky Ticky 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 Tick. One day, a flood washes him out of his home. It carries him down a roadside ditch. He finally catches a small blade of grass and hangs on for his life. When he comes to, he's lying in the hot sun in the middle of a garden path. A small boy named Teddy sees him. There's a dead mongoose. Let's have a funeral. No, let's take him and, and dry him. Maybe he isn't really dead. He's not He's not dead, but almost. Let's wrap him up in a blanket and get him warm. Achoo! No, no, don't scare him. Let's see what he'll do. This isn't good to eat. Ricky Ticky runs all around the table. He sits up and combs his fur. He scratches himself, and then he jumps on Teddy's shoulder. Don't be frightened, Teddy. That's his way of making friends. Ha <laughs> ha, he's tickling my chin. Ricky Ticky looks down Teddy's shirt. He sniffs the boy's ear. Then he climbs down to the floor. He sits there rubbing his nose. Oh my, to think he's really a wild animal. I guess he's so tame because we have been kind to him. Mongooses, mongooses, mongooses are like that. If if Teddy doesn't put him in a cage, he'll run around like that all day. Let's give him something to eat. They give Ricky Ticky a piece of raw meat. Ricky Ticky gobbles it down, and then he goes out and sits on the porch, drying his fur. He is feeling better. There is a lot to explore in this house. I will stay and find out all about it. Ricky Ticky spends all day roaming around the house. He nearly drowns in the bathtub. He puts his nose in the ink on the writing table. He even burns his nose on the big man's cigar. When night comes, he goes to bed with Teddy. Teddy's mother comes in to kiss her son goodnight. I don't like that. What if he bites Teddy? Don't, don't worry. He would never do that. Teddy is safer with that little beast than if he had a guard dog watching over him. If a snake came into the nursery, don't even think about anything so horrible. Act 2. It is morning. Ricky Ticky comes to breakfast. He is riding on Teddy's shoulder. They give him a banana and a boiled egg. He hops from one lap to another, making himself a home. Then he goes out into the garden. This is a great hunting ground. Wait, what are those noises I hear? Someone sounds very sad. Darzi, the tailor bird, and his wife sit on the rim of their beautiful nest. They are crying. Oh, I can't believe it. What's the matter? What's, What's the, the matter? matter? We are very sad. One of our babies fell out of the nest yesterday. Nag ate him. That is very sad, but I'm a stranger here. Who's Nag? Darzee and his wife sit and cry without answering. Suddenly, Yes! Who is Nag? I am Nag. Look and be afraid. The sight of the bl big black cobra makes Ricky Ticky jump back two whole feet. The snake just looks at him with his wicked snake eyes. Then he spreads his hood as far as it will go. Ricky Ticky is afraid for a minute. He has never met a real life cobra before. But his mother taught him that a mongoose's business in life is to fight and eat snakes. Nag knows that too. 
At the bottom of his cold heart, he is afraid. Well, do you think that it is right for you to eat fledglings out of a nest? Nag knows that mongoose is in the garden, meaning death for his family, sooner or later. He wants to get Ricky Ticky off his guard. Let's talk. You eat eggs? Why shouldn't I eat birds? Behind you! Look behind you! <laughs> Ricky Ticky jumps up in the air as high as he can go. Nagina, Nag's wicked wife, whizzes under him. She hisses again when she sees that he has she has missed. Ricky Ticky comes down on her back. He bites down, but not long enough. He jumps clear of the snake's deadly tail. He leaves Nagina hurting and angry. Wicked, wicked Darcy. Ricky Ticky feels his eyes growing red with anger. Nag and Nagina have disappeared into the grass. Ricky Ticky doesn't think he can fight two snakes at the same time. He trots off to the gravel path. He sits down to think. Even though I am young, I am very smart. I managed to escape Nagina's blow from me. Now I am ready to be petted. Are you okay, Ricky Ticky? Are you okay, Ricky Ticky? Act three. Be careful, I am death. The dusty brown snakeling is waiting to harm Teddy. His bite is as dangerous as a cobra's. Ricky Ticky feels his eyes are growing red. He dances up to Karate. What he doesn't know is that Karate is more dangerous than Nag. The snakeling is so small, he can turn quickly. Unless Ricky Ticky can bite him in the back of the head, Karate will lash at his eye or lip. The snake lashes out and Ricky Ticky jumps sideways. Look, our mongoose is killing a snake. Oh, oh! Teddy's father runs out of the house with a stick. Karate lashes out again, a bit too far. Ricky Ticky jumps on the snake's back, bites the snake on the back of the head, and rolls away. Karate is paralyzed. Now to eat him from the tail forward. But wait, if I get too full, I'll be slow. I must keep myself thin if I want to fight. Teddy's father keeps beating the dead snakeling. There's no need for that. I've killed him. You saved my Teddy. Ricky Ticky snuggles into her arms, enjoying the attention. Act 4. It is evening and the family is having dinner. Ricky Ticky strolls up and down the dining table. He could have stuffed himself with all the good food, but he remembers Nag and Nagina. His eyes get red as he goes off, shouting his war cry. Ricky Ticky 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 Ticky. There, now let's get you to bed. You can sleep under the covers with me. As soon as Teddy is asleep, Ricky Ticky takes his nightly walk around the house. He runs into Chachundra, the mas- muskrat. He is a sad soul. Don't kill me, Ricky Ticky. Please don't kill me. Do you think a snake killer kills muskrats? No. Who? No. Who? Who kills snakes? Gets those who kill snakes get killed by snakes. How can I be sure that Nag won't mistake me for you, some dark night? There's no danger of that. Nag is in the garden, and I know you don't go there. My cousin Chew of the Rat told me. Told you, Rat. What? Shh. Nag is everywhere. Ricky, take it. You should have talked to Chew in the garden. Well, I didn't. You must tell me. Quick, or I'll bite you. I'm a very poor man. I don't have any courage. Shh. I must not tell you anything. Can't you hear, Ricky, Ticky? Ricky Ticky Ticky Ticky. listens. The house is still, except... I hear it. The sound of a snake's scales on the bricks. That's Nag or Nagina crawling into the bathroom pipe. You're right, Chachandra. I should have talked to Chua. Ricky Ticky goes quickly to Teddy's room, but it's empty. He sneaks into the bathroom. He hears Nag and Nagina whispering together outside. When the house is empty, Ricky Ticky... We'll have to go away. Then the garden will be ours again. Go quietly. Remember, the big man who killed Carrot, bite him first. Then come out and we'll hunt for Ricky Ticky together. Are you sure we, we should kill the people? Yes. When... The There were no people in the house. Did we have a 
mongoose in the garden. When the house is empty, we are the king and queen of the garden. Our eggs will be in the melon patch tomorrow. Our children need room to grow in peace and quiet. I had not thought of that. I will go. We will want need to hurt for Ricky Ticky. I will kill the people, and the and the house will be empty. Ricky Ticky will leave. Act five. Ricky Ticky tingles all over with rage. He hates Nag. Nag's head comes through the pipe. His five feet of cold body follow it. Ricky Ticky is frightened when he sees the size of the big cobra. In the dark, he can see the snake's eyes. If I kill him here, Nagina will know. If I fight him on the bathroom floor, he might win. What am I to do? Mmm, that is good. Now when Carrot has killed the big man, had a stick. When he comes in the ba- to bathe in the morning, he won't have a stick with him. I will wait here until he comes. Nagina, do you hear me? I will wait here in the cool until daytime. There is no answer from outside. Ricky Tiggy knows Nagina has gone away. Nag coils himself down around the bottom of the water jar. Ricky Tiggy stays still as death. After an hour, he begins to move slowly toward the jar. Nag is asleep. Now where will I fight? If will I, now where will I get the best hold on him? If I don't break his back at the first jump, he can still fight. And if he fights, oh, Ricky, his neck is too thick. If I bite near the tail, that would only make him angry. I must bite his head right above the hood. Then I must hold on for dear life. Ricky Ticky jumps. He holds down the snake's head. He is battered to and fro like a rat being shaken by a dog. Up and down, around in circles, his eyes are red as he holds on. He upsets the soap dish and is banged against the side of the tub. He still holds on. He closes his jaws tighter and tighter. If he dies, he wants to die with the teeth locked on the snake. He grows dizzy and is aching. Suddenly, something goes off like thunder behind him. A hot wind knocks him back, and red fire singes his fur. The big man was awakened by the commotion. He fires both barrels of a shotgun into Nag, just behind the hood. I'm sure I am quite dead, but I must hold on. It's the mongoose again. The little fellow has saved our lives. Thank goodness. Ricky Ticky spends the night in Teddy's room. He shakes himself often to find out if he is really broken into 40 pieces as he imagines. When morning comes, he is very sore, but pleased with what he has done. Act 6. Now I have Nagina to deal with. She will be worse than five nags, and who knows when her eggs will hatch. Goodness, I must go see Darcy. Ricky Ticky doesn't even wait for breakfast. He runs to the thorn bush where Darcy is singing at the top of his voice. The news of Nag's death is everywhere in the garden. Oh, you stupid tuft of feathers. Is this the time to sing? Nag is dead. Nag is dead. The brave Ricky Ticky caught him by the head and held on. The big man brought the bang stick and Nag fell into pieces. He will never eat my babies again. That's true, but where's Nagina? Nagina came to the pipe and called for Nag, and Nag came out on the end of the stick. The sweeper threw him on the garbage heap. Let's sing about the great red-eyed Ricky Ticky. Darcy, stop singing. You're all safe up there in your nest, but it's working me down here. For the great Ricky Ticky's sake, I will stop. What do you need, O oh killer of the terrible Nag? I'll ask again. Where's Nagina? On the garbage heap, mourning for Nag. Have you heard where she keeps her eggs? In the melon patch, near the wall. She hid them there weeks ago. Why didn't you tell me before? Ricky Ticky, you are not going to eat her eggs, are you? Not exactly, no. Darcy, please do me a favor. Fly off to the stables and pretend that your wing is broken. Let Nagina chase you away to this bush. I need to get to the melon patch. If I go there now, she will see me. Darzee is a featherbrained little fellow. He thinks about the plan for a minute, 
Finally, his wife makes him come to his senses. She knows that cobra eggs mean more cobras to kill her children. She flies off from the nest, leaving Darzi to keep the babies warm. Oh, my wing is broken. The boy threw a stone at me and broke it. The boy broke it with a stone. After you are dead, I will settle the score. My husband lies dead. This morning, before the night, the boy will be dead. Don't bother to run away. I will catch you. Look at me. Darzee's wife knows better than to look at the snake. She would be too frightened to move. She flutters about, weeping, and never leaving the ground. Nagina moves more quickly. Ricky Tiki hears them going up the path. He races for the melon patch. There, he finds 25 eggs cleverly hidden. I arrived just in time. These babies are about to hatch. They could kill a man or a mongoose. Ricky Tiki bites off the tops of the eggs and crushes the baby cobras. Finally, there are only three eggs left. Then he hears Darcy's wife screaming. Ah! Ricky Tiki! I led Nagina toward the house. She has gone inside the porch. Come quickly. She is ready to kill. Ricky Tiki smashes two eggs. He runs fr from the melon patch with a third one on his mouth. He scuttles the porch. Teddy and his parents are at the table, but they are not moving. Their faces are white. Nagina is coiled up on the mat by Teddy's chair. She is dancing and singing a song of triumph. Son of the big man that killed Nag, stay still. I'm not ready yet. All of you stay still. If you move, I'll strike. If you don't move, I'll strike. You fools kill my nag. Father! Stay still, Teddy. You mustn't move. Please keep still. Turn around, Nagina. Turn and fight. In good time, I will settle with you right now. Look at your friends, Ricky Ticky. They are still and white. They are afraid. If you come one step closer, I will strike. Look at your eggs in the melon patch. Go and look, Nagina. The, na the big snake turns around and sees the egg on the porch. Ah, give it to me! Nagina spins around, forgetting everything in order to save her one egg. Ricky Ticky sees Teddy's father take Teddy by the shoulder. He drags him across the table, out of reach of Nagina. I tricked you, I tricked you. Rick Tick Tick, the boy's safe. It was I that caught Nag in the bathroom last night. He threw me to and thro fro. But he could not shake me off. He was dead before the man shot him. I did it. Ricky, ticky, tick, tick. Come and fight with me, Nagina. You will not be a widow for long. Give me the egg, Ricky, ticky. Give me the last one, and I will go away and never come back. Yes, you will be on the garbage heap with Nag. Fight me. The big man has gone for his gun. Fight me. Ricky Tiki dances around Nagina. His eyes are like hot coals. Nagina flings out at him. Ricky Tiki jumps backward. Again and again she strikes each time she misses. Ricky Tiki dances around her. Nagina turns around to face him. Her tail swishes along the floor of the porch. Ricky Tiki had forgotten about the egg. Nagina comes nearer to it. Suddenly she catches it in her mouth and flies like an arrow down the porch steps. Ricky Tiki runs after her. He knows that he has to catch her or all the trouble will begin again. Ricky Tiki catches up with her and latches onto her tail. Nagina goes down her snake hole and Ricky Tiki goes down with her. It's all over for Ricky Tiki. We must sing a death song. Brave Ricky Tiki is dead. Nagina will surely kill him underground. Darzee sings a mournful song that he quickly makes up. Just as he gets to the saddest part, the grass around the snake hole moves. Ricky Tiki, covered with dirt, drags himself out, licking his whiskers. Darzee stops singing. Ricky Tiki! Achoo! It's all over. The widow will never come out again. Ricky Tiki curls himself up in the grass, and he sleeps where he is. He sleeps and sleeps until it is late in the afternoon. For he had done a hard day's work. Now I will go back to the house. Tell the coppersmith bird to spread the news. Ding dong talk. Nag is dead dong. 
Nagina is dead. Ding dong talk. The frogs begin croaking and the birds begin singing. For Nag and Nagina used to eat them as well. Now they are safe. Ricky Tiki goes to the house and Teddy's parents come out and cry over him. That night they feed him until he can eat no more. He goes to bed on Teddy's shoulder. Teddy's mother looks in on them. He saved our lives. Just think. He saved all our lives. Oh, it's you. What are you worried about? All the cobras are dead, and if they weren't, I'm here. Ricky Ticky did not grow too proud of himself. He kept the garden as a mongoose should keep it. Never a cobra dared show its face inside the walls.